Hello and welcome back. My name is William. Today I want to talk about the fascinating topic of strongly connected components and how we can find them using Tarjan's algorithm. So what are SCCs or strongly connected components? I like to think of them as self-contained cycles within a directed graph, where for every vertex in a given cycle, you can reach every other vertex in the same cycle. For example, in the graph below, there are four strongly connected components. I've outlined them here in different colors. If you inspect each SCC, you'll notice that each has its own self-contained cycle and that for each component, there is no way to find a path that leaves a component and comes back. Because of this property, we can be sure that SCCs in a graph are unique. To understand Tarjan's algorithm, we're first going to need to understand the concept of a low link value. Simply put, the low link value of a particular node is the smallest node ID reachable from that node, including the ID of the node itself. For this to make sense, I'm going to label each of the nodes in our graph by doing a DFS. Suppose we start at the top left corner and label that node with an ID of zero. Now let's explore the rest of the graph and assign IDs to all our nodes. I will let the animation play and you try and follow along. All right, now that we're done labeling the nodes, inspect the graph and try and determine the low-link value for each node. Again, the low-link value of a node is the smallest node ID reachable from that node, including itself. For example, the low-link value of node one is zero, since node zero is the node with the lowest ID reachable from node one. Similarly, the low link value of node three is two, since node two is the node with the lowest ID reachable from node three. So if we assign all the low link values to all the nodes, we get the following setup. From this view, you realize that all nodes which have the same low link value belong to the same strongly connected component. If I assign colors to each SCC, you can clearly see that for each component, all the low link values are the same. This seems a little too easy, right? Well, you're not wrong, there is a catch. The flaw with this technique is that it is highly dependent on the traversal order of the DFS, which is effectively random. Let me show you a counterexample. Suppose we take the same graph and rearrange the node IDs as though the DFS started at zero, went to node one, got stuck in the component with node one, continued on node two, explored three, got stuck again, and resumed at node four, went to node five, and finished at six. You'll notice that this time, node six in the new graph has a low link value of zero, which should indicate that node six is somehow part of node zero's strongly connected component which we know is not the case. However, that's not the only issue. The real issue is that all the low link values are the same, but there are clearly multiple strongly connected components in the graph. What's going on? Well, what's happening is that the low link values are highly dependent on the order in which nodes are explored during the DFS. So we might not end up with the correct arrangement of node IDs for our low link values to tell us which nodes are in which SCCs. This is where Tarjan's algorithm kicks in. Tarjan's maintains an invariant to prevent low link values of multiple strongly connected components from interfering with each other. So to cope with the random traversal order of the depth first search, Tarjan's algorithm maintains a set often as a stack, 
of valid nodes from which to update low link values from. How the stack works is that nodes are added to the stack as nodes are explored for the first time, and nodes are removed from the stack each time a strongly connected component is found. Taking a step back, if variables u and v are nodes in our graph, and we are currently exploring node u, then our new low link update condition is that to update node u's low link value to node v's low link value, there has to be a path of edges from u to v and node v must be on the stack. Another small difference we're going to make to finding the correct low link values is that instead of finding all the low link values after the fact, we're going to update them as we do our depth first search on the fly, if you will. This will allow us to obtain a linear time complexity. We'll be doing an example in the following slides, but this is Tarjan's algorithm in a nutshell. Start out and mark each node as unvisited. Start the depth for search somewhere and don't stop until all the nodes are visited. Upon visiting a node, assign it an ID and a low link value. Additionally, also mark the node as visited and add it to the scene stack. On the depth for search callback after the recursion comes back, if the previous node is on the stack, then min the current node's low link value with the last node's low link value. This is essentially what will allow low link values to propagate throughout cycles. After visiting all a node's neighbors, if the current node started the strongly connected component, then pop off all nodes from the stack which are in the strongly connected component. You know a node started a strongly connected component if its ID is equal to its low link value. I'll let you think about that a bit more and it'll start making sense. Let's do an example. I'm going to mark unvisited nodes as blue, nodes for which the depth first search is still exploring some neighbors as orange, and nodes which the depth first search has explored all of its neighbors as gray. Note that if a node is orange or gray, then it is on the stack and we can update its low link value. I will also be tracking the nodes which are on the stack in the left column, so keep your eyes peeled on that as well. So let's start our depth first search. So just randomly pick a node and start there. As we explore unvisited nodes, give each node an ID and a low link value equal to the ID. So now we're at node two and our only option is to now visit node zero. Since node zero is already visited, we don't want to visit it again. So now we backtrack. On the backtracking, since node zero is on the stack, we take the minimum of the current node's low link value and node zero's low link value. Similarly, now min the low link value of the node we were just at, which is node one with node two. And also the same for node zero. Upon returning back to node zero, we realize that we've actually finished a strongly connected component since we visited all the neighbors of node zero and its ID is equal to its low length value. This means we need to remove all the nodes associated with a strongly connected component from the stack. However, we're not done exploring the graph, so pick another node at random. Let's start at node three and go right. Our only option is to go down. Now we're at node five. Let's take the edge to node zero. So node zero is already visited, so we can't go there. On the callback, we notice that node zero is not on the stack at the moment. So we can't min node five's low link value against node zero. This is actually very, very good because if we did, then we would contaminate the strongly connected component node five as part of with a lower low link value, which node zero has to offer. So let's go to node six. So now we have three edges to choose from. Let's take the one on the right 
node two is not on the stack. So don't min with its low length value. Now let's take the left edge to node four. Node four is on the stack, so we can min its low length value, giving node six also a low length value of four. The last edge we need to visit is the one going to node zero. This is a situation where node zero is not on the stack, so we can't min with its low length value. On the callback, node five can min with node six's low length value because it is on the stack. Similarly for node four, Coming back to node four, we visited all its neighbors and its ID is equal to its low length value. So it marks the start of a strongly connected component. So we now have to remove all associated nodes in the strongly connected component from the stack. These would be all of the purple nodes. Now coming back to node three, we cannot min its low length value with node four because we just removed node four from the stack. You will also notice that node three's ID is equal to its low length value. So it should be the start of a strongly connected component. However, we have not finished visiting all of node three's neighbors. So we cannot make that assessment just yet. Now let's take the downward edge to visit node seven. Now take the edge to node five. On the callback, notice that node five is not on the stack, so we don't min with its low length value. Now up to node three. On the callback, we can min with node three's low link since node three is on the stack. Also min with node seven. So now we've finished with the last strongly connected component. All we need to do is remove all associated nodes from the stack. And that's how Tarjan's algorithm works to find strongly connected components. Very beautiful, isn't it? Let's look at some pseudocode for how this works. I think it will solidify your understanding. To get started in the global or class scope, I defined a few variables that we'll need. The first is a constant to represent unvisited nodes, then comes n, the number of nodes in the graph, and g, an adjacency list of directed edges. Both n and g are inputs to this algorithm. Then comes two variables, id to give each node an id, and scc count to track the number of strongly connected components found. After I define a few arrays which store auxiliary information about the nodes in our graph. The first array is IDs, which stores the ID of each node, then is low to store the low length values, and finally on stack to track whether or not a node is on the stack. Finally is the stack data structure itself, which should at minimum support push and pop operations. Inside the find SCCs method, the first thing I do is assign the ID of each node to be unvisited. The IDs array will be serving to track whether or not a node has been visited as well as what a node's ID is. In the following loop, I iterate through all the nodes in the graph. There, I start a depth first search on node i if node i has not yet been visited. At the end, I return the array low an array of low length values, which will be the final output of the algorithm. Now let's look at what's happening inside the depth for search method, which is really where all the magic happens. So this is the inside of the depth for search method. The input argument to the depth for search method is a variable called at, which I use to denote the ID of the node we are currently at. On the first three lines, I do some housekeeping stuff, which is add the current node to the stack, mark the current node as being on the stack, and give an ID and a low length value to the current node. Then comes the part where I visit all the neighbors of the current node. To do this, I reach into our graph stored as an adjacency list and loop over a variable called to, which represents the ID of the node we're going to. And the next line says that 
If the node we're going to is unvisited, then visit it. Remember the IDs array tracks the ID of node i, but also whether or not node i has been visited. This next line is very important. In fact, it's probably the most important line on the slide. The first thing to notice is that this line happens after the recursive call to the depth first search method, meaning that this line gets called on the callback from the depth first search. The line says that if the node we just came from is on the stack, then min the current lowling value with the node we were just at. This is what allows the lowling values to propagate throughout a cycle. So after we finish the for loop that visited all the neighbors of the current node, we need to check if we're at the start of a strongly connected component. To check if we're at the start of a strongly connected component, check if the ID of the current node is equal to the low link value for that node. After we have identified that we're at the beginning of a completed strongly connected component, pop off all the nodes inside the strongly connected component from the stack. As we're popping nodes from the stack, also mark off nodes as no longer being on the stack. One more critical thing we need to do while we're removing nodes from our stack is make sure that all nodes which are part of the same strongly connected component have the same ID. So here I just assign each node to have the same ID as the ID of the node which started the strongly connected component. Last things are to stop popping off nodes from the stack once we reach the start of the strongly connected component and also increment the strongly connected component count if you want to track the number of strongly connected components that were found. Well, that's all I have for Tarjan's strongly connected components algorithm. As always, there's working source code for this algorithm at github.com slash williamfiza slash algorithms. The link should be in the description. And folks, thanks for watching. Drop a comment if you have any inquiries. Like this video and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science videos. Cheers.